what you when you're baking sourdough bread, you want to be baking in a very steamy, moist environment, which will give you a nice crisp crust on the bread. So to get steam into an oven, I'm going to use a cookie pan, cookie sheet, and I'm going to fill it with water and put it in here, and it's going to steam up inside the oven. I have a convection oven. If you have convection, that's a good thing. If you don't have convection, just put it on bake. My oven is set at 500 degrees Fahrenheit or roughly 260 Celsius. All right, let's have a look here. Getting close. I need to bake this off first. I'm gonna put these in the fridge to hold them. Now the other reason I recommend using those bannetons is because this is what happens. The San Francisco is completely flattened out to a big kind of pile. It's just a, it's just a flat kind of mess. And that's gonna be a big pain to get off onto the baking stone. This is a little more upright, the King Arthur, but uh, it's still very flat and it's gonna be a little messy too. So the way to do this is to kind of scoop them toward the edge and just kind of plop them onto the stone. There's always, it's always difficult. Give this a little dusting of flour. Once this gets onto the stone, I'm going to slash the dough using a double-edged razor. Get yourself a little coffee stir stick and a double-edged razor. Very carefully hold this away from you. Don't put it toward your face and bend it, but very carefully put it away from you. Slide that through there. And you have a razor on a stick that we're going to use to slash open the dough. The slash on the dough is what gives dough that, uh, that rustic cut look when it comes out of the oven, but it also gives the inside of the dough a place to expand because this dough is gonna blow up and it's called oven spring. It's gonna blow up in the oven and if you, if you don't have a cut in, the, in that outer skin of the dough, it's just gonna blow out the, the sides and just be a big ugly mess. So when you give it a couple of slashes across the top, uh, you're creating a place for that crumb to, to bloom out of. A Little bit of cornmeal. That was awful. All right, that was a horrible transfer. This is why I like to use pots and bannetons. 500 degrees Fahrenheit, 260 Celsius for about 30 minutes. Okay, we've been about 30 minutes now. I'm going to lower the temperature down to 450 Fahrenheit, 230 Celsius. About 15, 20 more minutes. All right, time for a little check.
good crust. Bottom is not cooked. This is always the problem with the stone. Put it in upside down for a few minutes. Okay, it's been about five minutes upside down. Here's the King Arthur. And that is the pizza stone. Sounds better because I had it upside down for a few minutes. But it's not as it's not as done as I like on the bottom, but the top looks great. Give this a little flour. I messed up on the other one there. So this needs to be slid off better. The King Arthur was kind of a disaster there. All right, this is going to be quick. Add the water. Whoops. Well, San Francisco got a little dark. All right, I just messed up the San Francisco loaf. I forgot to turn the temperature down halfway through. It was at 500 and I left it and I was upstairs uh, taking some photos off my memory card that got full. I toasted it. I'm sure it's going to taste good. San Francisco. Little dark. It's going to look cool on the inside though, I guarantee. Okay, it is now time to get these in the oven. So, to prepare we are going to put these in the oven to preheat. But I'm going to put these in for a few minutes and get these smoking hot and get ready to bake from the Bannetons. When we bake in the pots, we do not need the water anymore. We do not need stone. All right, I'm putting in the pots to preheat. This is the other great thing about having pots to cook in is you can cook two loaves at the same time. So these are just going to preheat for 10 minutes or so. They're going to get super hot in there. It's 500 degrees. Sometimes this gets a little sticky here. I'm just going to gently pull that away. This pot is smoking hot. Cornmeal in the bottom. King Arthur flour going in the yellow pot. Now this way, this is a flip. We're gonna do a flip right into the pot. <clears throat> I'm gonna flour that. Slash.
in the oven. San Francisco in the orange pot. Five hundred degrees, two sixty Celsius. It's been about twenty five minutes to thirty minutes with the lids on. The lids are coming off. That's where we are. A little different than doing it on the sheet the sheets there. All right, so. Lowering the temperature to 450 Fahrenheit, 230 Celsius. Lids off. And these are going to bake until the color is what I'm looking for, which is a little past golden brown, sort of a deep caramel, slightly darker caramel brown. There we are. King Arthur, San Francisco. And it's a hot loaf of bread. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so that was 24 hours. <laughs> uh, let's do an autopsy. King Arthur, San Francisco. Proofing on a cookie sheet and um, baking on a pizza stone makes a much flatter bread. And uh, the bottom does not get done as much. And it's just kind of more sp sort of splatted out. It, it's, still, it's still sprung up a lot, but it, it's, not, it's not as nice. And when you leave the oven on 500 degrees for the full 30 minutes, um, you get some problems. I screwed up. It's still going to taste fine, and the outside's dark, which I actually like. But uh, this one was a bit of a mess up. The, the crumb inside is gonna be okay, but um, I charred the outside, oh well. So this is what it looks like when you bake in a pot. It's a much more uniform loaf of bread. The bottom has a nice hollow sound. It's just very, it's just very nice. Uh, this is the San Francisco. Nice. All right, so let's let's cut into these, see what the inside looks like. I messed up this, oh, got overcooked. It, this was in there for about 45 minutes before it started burning. It's still gonna taste okay. And the, the bottom cooked a little better than this one. It's gonna be a little, little bit soft. Let's cut into the bad one first. So this is a San Francisco starter, overcooked in the oven. Nice. Interesting crumb. Uh, I do like the crust, actually. I, I like a dark crust. King Arthur. Beautiful. The crumb is not as open, but it's, it's very nice. 
All right, let's taste. All right, I've never had San Francisco starter before. Let's try it out. I taste the crust. That charred crust, which I really like. I can taste a tiny bit of acidity. It's not sour, I would say. It tastes different than the King Arthur, but I would, I, it's not sour. It's a very mild acidity. King Arthur. I'd say same. It doesn't really have much uh, sourness today. They're both just completely yummy. Just completely... They taste like beautiful, beautiful bread. The only real difference I can taste, actually, is the, the crust, which is the way it was cooked. The outside is a bit charred, but I like it dark. Some people don't. The inside is beautiful. I would definitely bake with this again. So I didn't taste a huge difference between the two. The major difference was obviously the way this was cooked, because that got, that got dark. It's, this is just a really nice caramelized flavor to it. It doesn't taste burnt. That's, that's the point. It doesn't taste burnt. All right, this is the King Arthur flour loaf that was proofed in a banneton and cooked in a pot. Beautiful. King Arthur flour. Perfect. Just awesome. Just really gorgeous. Nice heavy crust. Open crumb. A bit moist. Perfect. I wonder if the crumb will be similar to the other loaf. San Francisco. So he, here's the difference. This is cooked on a stone a pizza stone. This is cooked in a pot. It's more of a uniform rise. This one just kind of looks kind of like a sloppy oven spring rise. This is more uniform. But just so awesome. I am so happy with this loaf of bread. Look at that crust. It's just a thick crust. San Francisco. King Arthur. I highly recommend investing in one of these if you want bread that looks like this. For about five years, I baked my bread like this on a stone. It's, I'm, and there's nothing wrong with this. It tastes great. It just doesn't, it doesn't come up. Uh, the edges are flat and uh, it just, it's not very uniform. That is just a beautiful spring. All right, let's taste. From the pot. This 
is San Francisco from the pot. Oh. Listen to that. I'm sorry you can't be here to taste this. This might be one of the best loaves of bread I've ever, ever baked. Wow. King Arthur from the pot. Definitely has a more sour flavor. The King Arthur. I'm getting more flavor out of it. The thing also about sourdough is this is going to taste more sour tomorrow and the next day and the next day. It gets more sour over time. But the best time to eat the bread is right out of the oven. Wait about an hour and you'll get this kind of crispy crust. It's just crazy good. Wow, wow, wow. So there it is. Overall, a very successful first bake video. We did the head to head. There is not a clear winner today. There is, uh, there is not a clear winner. Both breads are, are like 9.5 out of 10. Just the flavor, the texture, the smell, the, the look, uh, awesome. Uh, this was my unfortunate accident, the over the overbake, but if you didn't see this come out of the oven and you just ate this and you just tasted it without looking at it, you, you wouldn't even, you would never know. The, uh, this is flavor. <laughs> it's okay. So it's not ruined. So just awesome. Uh, I would say both of these are keepers. Not a huge difference. Nothing, nothing earth shattering today was, 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 uh, was learned about either starter. They were both the same to work with and they baked very similarly. And, uh, I give them both a definite thumbs up. So get yourself some sourdough. I want you to bake a loaf of bread. Do it. Take a picture, upload it to Instagram or Facebook, hashtag Vino Farm. And I'm going to link to the pictures and I'll tell everyone to go check them out and we'll have some discussion about bacon sourdough. Comment below, like, thumbs up. So next week, two more sourdoughs are gonna go head to head right here in this kitchen. So please stay tuned, subscribe to the channel. I will see you next week. Please get baking. Thanks for watching.